Hello, class. I hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, so I was looking at some of your cooldowns, and I think today we're going to look over some of the stuff that we need to work on, uh, specifically the distributive property. But before we dive in, let's look at the meme of the day. I saw this and <laughs> reminded me a lot of some of your work. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the distributive property. Some of you know what it is, some of you aren't that well versed on it, but just to put it in a nutshell, say we have this floor plan. We have three bedrooms, two restrooms, kitchen, and a living room, just to say. And I know I've said this before, but I think this helps capture how to apply the distributive property. If we have one house, well, how many bathrooms do we have? We have three bath, sorry, bedrooms, and we have two restrooms. Well, okay, so that means yep, be just three bedrooms, two restrooms. Well, what if we had two houses like this? How many bathrooms and bedrooms do we have? Well, we have two times the same floor plan, which is just six bedrooms and for restrooms and we keep going so all we're doing is multiplying well let's look at this a little bit um, more so sp speaking algebraically the distributive property really says we have some quantity times a number so these are just random numbers or variables well that's the same as saying x plus y, and both of them are being multiplied by a. And that's all really there's to it, but applying it, remembering to use it, that's a little harder. Well, so let's look at this. We have standard form. All standard form is, is just a way of saying we write our equations. We have many ways to write them, but standard form means we have some number, we have a coefficient times a variable plus the constant equals another number. This should look very familiar because all our equations look like this. Well, just looking at these two problems, what is the first one in standard form? No, right? Because we have a quantity and we're yeah, we're multiplying by the quantity. It's not in standard form. But what about is this one? Is this one in standard form? Well, I look at it and I see it's subtracting. So does that make a difference? No, it doesn't. Because we can just write this as adding a negative. And we see that it's, uh, it resembles this equation. So this is standard form. Um, You'll need to know that a little bit. Just know that when you apply the distributive property, you're usually making it into standard form. Okay, moving on. Now, here we're talking about rectangular arrays. Uh, don't get freaked out. This is just like a tape diagram. So it's a tape diagram. Who's height is greater than one. And we might think, well, what do you mean greater than one? All the tape diagrams we've been looking at, their height has been one, right? Because then what, so that is that we have this, if this is, this is length two, well, the height is one, right? And what's the area? Just two. If this is x, well, what's the area? Just x. That's what I mean. Um, I, this isn't that complicated, but let's look at an example. If we say, if we say that this, um, if we say that this length is x, and we say that this length 
is three, well, our height is 12. So again, this is just a, a visual. It's not drawn to scale. Well, then how do we find the area? Well, that's just 12 length times width, 12 times x. And then the other one is all this three times 12. When, when we multiplied, it just gives us 12x, and this one is 36. And that's how we use a rectangular array. But notice how we also, this is kind of represents uh, the distributive property. We're saying 12 times x plus 3. So we're just adding all the lengths and multiplying it by the height. So here, here's a couple examples. Pause the video now and apply the distributive property and then draw how the rectangular array looks like. Okay, so we know that the first one, we have uh, the length is added up. So we have three Y and we have a length of two. Well, and our height is six, so what's six? times three y, well that is 18 y, and what's six times two? That is 12. So that means, well here we're just multiplying by everything on the inside, so that is 16 y plus 12, and that is our answer. So if, if you haven't, if you got stuck on the first one, um, try the other ones, hopefully it's a little better now. Does this question look familiar? We, well, it should because a lot of you got this wrong in the cool down. Well, we're saying we have to multiply both by five. So that means five gets multiplied by y and five gets multiplied by the fraction two fifths. So we end up with five times y plus five times two fifths. Well, how does that look like here? We have five as the height and the length of y and the length of two fifths. So we just multiply that five y and this is 10 fifths or just two. So our answer is five y plus two. And lastly, I uh, will just give you the answer. You guys should be able to solve this one on your own. It is, well, we're saying the height is x, and we have a length of 3 and the length of z. So we just add, well, this is 3 times x plus x times z. That's all there's to it. So what do you notice about when we multiply these values. Uh, just keep that in mind. So before we uh, scrap things up, just like we were uh, multiplying, we can also divide by the distributive property. So if we look at this problem, well, order does matter in division. So this is saying, Let me use a different color. This is saying two divided by two times B plus 12 divided by two. Let me fix that up. Well, what's two divided by two? Well, that's just one one times b plus what's 12 divided by two, that is six. So our answer is just b plus six. Notice how I kept the order the same because dividing two divided by 12 
is different. That means we want one sixth. The answer is yeah, one sixth. But here it is six. Yes, there is a pattern when you divide the opposite way. Well, all right, so on your own, let's try these problems. Here we have 20 R minus eight divided by four, and we have 49 G minus seven divided by seven. Work, pause now and work these out. Well, we know that division, the order matters how we divide. Well, now I can say, well, well, what if I change that into multiplication, right? Division is just multiplication, but the reciprocal. So let's rewrite this as 20R minus eight times one fourth, right? Right, looks familiar. So then we can actually rewrite this if we want to as one fourth times all this. So this is 20 over four R minus eight over four. So we can simplify. So this becomes what's 20 divided by four. That is five R minus two. And what did he get for the next one? Well, here, what's 47, 49 divided by seven? That's just seven. Don't forget our variable, g minus seven divided by seven, one. Easy peasy, chicken squeezy. Lastly, just to sum up today though, when we apply the distributive property, we really, we're just saying we're expanding the expression. So thinking of what we did today, how can we expand this expression? So again, when it says expand, apply the distributive property. Well, just a couple things to think of. Normally we've done two terms. That's what these are called. We're gonna get into that much later. So normally we have two things when we apply the distributive property, but now we have three. Does that mean we only apply it to the first two? Hmm. Well, solve this on your own. And if you're curious for the answer, Come see me in the office hours. Yeah. Well, that does it for today. Um, so hopefully this helps solving these expressions. Uh, I've included the link that we tried the first day that wasn't working. Um, they emailed me back. They say it should be working now. So let's try these problems and submit it. Show your work. It is for a grade. Oh, yep, formative grade. Um, normal standard formative uh, grading procedures apply. So, well, I guess you can't underline your work, but underline the question, but um, you get graded for showing your work, graded for answering in the complete sentence, and graded for trying. Okay, have a good rest of your day.